Hello, Patrick Walchuk here, and this is a movie about how to calculate the financials on a multi-unit residential property, and more importantly, how to interpret those financials. So let's get right into some of the terminology. A capitalization rate. You calculate that by taking the net operating income and dividing it by the selling price, and that'll give you a number like a three or a four or a five. The value of the property. If you want to calculate that, you take the net operating income and divide it by your capitalization rate, and that'll tell you how much the building is worth. Multiple times the gross and the net. Those are very similar, but for the first one, the gross multiple, you take the selling price of the property and divide it by your effective rental income. Now, we'll discuss more what an ERI means in a, in a few minutes, so don't worry about that for now. <clears throat> in, excuse me. In terms of the net multiple, again, you take the selling price and you divide it by your net operating income, and that'll give you a number like 24, 25, or 30, or whatever. SRI, the scheduled rental income. This is how much money a property can generate when it's uh, taking in funds from every possible revenue source. So for example, you've got the rent on the property, maybe the landlord charges money for parking, maybe there's funds being generated by uh, locker rentals. So when you add in, if the property was completely tenanted and it's generating all those sources of revenue, that is the scheduled rental income. Now the effective rental income, that is a number, once you deduct it, let's say in this case here, 3% from the scheduled rental income, that gives you what the banks or appraisers call an effective rental income, and that uh, is to take out things like vacancy and bad debt. So it might be your SRI, negative 3% for vacancy and bad debt, gives you your ERI. So let's move on. We'll take an example here. <clears throat> Let's assume that we have a property that sold for $900,000. We have a scheduled rental income on the property of $60,000, and when we deduct 3% for vacancy and bad debt, that gives us an ERI of a little over $58,000. Now, in terms of expenses, an appraiser will include expenses of 5% for maintenance and 5% of management, for management. And that's 5% of your ERI, by the way. Now, the property's gonna have other expenses as well, right? So in this example, let's say you've got expenses of taxes, water, sewer, insurance, and that totals $15,000. So when we add in our maintenance or management, all of our other expenses, we now have our total operating expenses. In this case here, a little over $20,800. So now we've got the numbers to calculate our NOI or our net operating income. So we know what our revenue is, our effective rental income. <clears throat> we know what our total operating expenses are. And when you do the math, we have a net operating income of $37,380. Now, Let's take some of those formulas we, we learned and, and crunch them out. So for a capitalization rate, we just saw that our NOI is a little over $37,000. We know that we bought the building for $900,000, <clears> and that gives us a cap rate of 4.15. Now, operating expense ratios, very important because this tells you how much of your money or your income is going to pay expenses. So the lower, the better. In this case here, operating expense ratios take our total operating expenses, which we saw calculated on the last slide, divided by our effective rental income, and the numbers are right there for you. And in this case here, it comes out to a number of almost 36%. So what that's saying is that 36% of your income is going to pay for your expenses. This is um, uh, an average number, maybe a little bit below average. On the low end, you could have 25% operating expense ratio, which is fantastic. And on the high end, you could have like a 50%. And that means half of your income is going to pay your expenses. So those are kind of your parameters, 25 to 50%. Now, multiple times the gross. So again, we know that we purchased the property for 900,000 and the effective rental income was 58,000. So that gives us 
a number 15. Or if you take the 58,200 and you multiply it by 15, that will provide you with what we paid for the property. Now, the one I actually prefer looking at is the multiple times the net because that eliminates the wastage, if you will, of um, your, your uh, expenses. This is the true income of the property, if you will. So it's simply the sell price of the property and your net operating income and we're getting a number of 24, okay? So moving on, let's assume that you're in a market such as Ottawa is currently in where you should be able to have a positive cash flow on a property with a 35% down payment. So using our $900,000 purchase price, 35% is $315,000. <clears> that gives us a mortgage of $585,000. So if we assume that we can get a mortgage at a 3.5% rate on a five-year term amortized over 25 years, our annual debt service, ADS, and that's just a fancy way of saying, how much money are you paying on your mortgage every year? So our mortgage annual payments, or ADS, is a little over $35,000. So let's move on. <clears throat> and again, we're calculating these numbers and interpreting them at, at this point as we go along. So we know our NOI is 37,000 and change. Our ADS we just looked at is 35,000. So that gives us a positive cash flow of $2,328. So what does that mean? Is that good? Is that bad? Well, the good part is that it's a positive cash flow. It's not a negative cash flow. And in this example, we want to look at our ROI expressed as a percentage. So we take our cash flow and we divide it by how much money we invested in the property, which is our down payment. We didn't buy the property all cash, remember? We only used 35%. So that's our down payment. So that gives us a return on our investment of 0.74%. So what's the value of the property if we look at it backwards, like we talked about before, how you calculate value? And I just want to show you, again, a, a real example of how that works. So we take our NOI, which we know is a little over 37,000, and our cap rate, which we calculated previously at 4.1, and it's telling us the property uh, is worth about $911,000. Now, just to drive home the point about cap rates, I've got another example here. So if you took a separate property, and let's say this property uh, was generating an NOI of $45,000, so just a little bit more than, than example number one, but we had a much lower cap rate of 3.5. Now, the lower the cap rate, the more valuable the property, or it might be considered to be more of a blue chip neighborhood, whereas the higher cap rate reflects a higher risk. Okay, so in this case here, lower cap rate, good neighborhood is saying that the building that generates 45,000 actually has a value of close to $1.3 million. So this is great. We've got a positive cash flow and you also generate wealth with a property by paying down your mortgage every year, your tenants, and by the property increasing in value as the market goes up.